In my main video, I mentioned something called the shorter split line method. Um, I really had to zoom past that because of time constraints. But it's a very interesting way of dividing up voters into boundaries, into different districts. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time going into depth with it here. So this is the sample population I used in the main gerrymandering video. There are about 40 voters here, and I wanted to divide them up into eight different groups. Now when you have an easy number, it's a pretty simple thing to do. You find the line that divides them into two equally populous groups, and you use the shortest line if you have multiple lines that will do the same thing. So there are 20 voters on the left, and there's 20 voters on the right. Then you take each of those two groups, and you do the same thing again. You find the shortest line that will divide the two populations into equal sized groups. So now there's 10 in each group. And ultimately, we want eight voting ranges here, so we divide them one more time. And you end up with eight equally sized ranges, each with five votes. And that's the basics of the shortest split line method. Just always use the shortest line you can to divide the two groups. But the question that naturally comes up is what if you have an odd number of districts? If you want to divide them into seven groups instead of into eight groups. This is where the cleverness of the shortest split line method comes up. Because if you take seven divided by two, you don't get a round number, you get 3.5. But what you do is you take that 3.5 and you round it up to get four and down to get three. And this tells you the ratio that you want to draw the line at for the population. So you want to draw a line that divides the population into a 4-3 ratio. For every four voters in one group, you want three voters in the other group. So as best I can tell, this is the shortest line that will divide this population of voters into a 4-3 ratio. Let's just double check. There's 24 voters on the left. There are 18 voters on the right. 24 divided by 18 gives us 1.3. And 4 divided by 3 gives us 1.3. We've drawn this line in the right spot. The next step is to take that ratio, that 4-3 ratio, and that actually tells you how many districts you then want to divide each of these separate groups into. So on the left-hand side, we want to take that group of voters and divide them into four equally sized groups. Now that's really easy to do because we have an even number. So we find the shortest line to divide them into two equal sized groups, and then do it once again. Now we have our four groups on the left, each of which has six voters inside of it. Now to divide up the group that's on the right, we do the same thing that we did with the number 7. Take 3, divide it by 2, you get 1.5. Round 1.5 up, you get 2. Round 1.5 down, you get 1. So we want to divide that group into a 2-1 ratio. Finding the shortest line that will do that should be this line. We can just double check our math again. There are 12 voters in the top, 6 voters in the bottom. 12 divided by 6 gives us 2. 2 divided by 1 gives us 2. So we know we've drawn that line in the correct spot. And again, that ratio tells us how many districts we actually want to draw among these remaining areas. So that bottom one is one. We're done there, right? That has six voters. There's nothing more to do with that bottom district. The district that's two, it's an even number, so that's easy. We want to make two districts out of here, just divide it in half. There's the shortest line that will give us six voters on each side. And now at the end of that method, we have seven equally populous districts that were drawn with the shortest lines possible to create those districts. If you're interested in this and other stuff relating to electoral fairness, I highly recommend you go to rangevoting.org. Uh, they're the group that, as far as I can tell, came up with the split line method, and they have a lot of really interesting information there, such as maps of all of the states in America drawn using this method and comparing them to the districts that currently exist. Thank you very much for watching.